As you know, ColourPop is constantly coming out with new launches, so I'm doing my periodic What's New at ColourPop. I'm going over all of the releases and launches that have been sent over to my house recently. If you're new to these videos for me, this series, I don't review everything, but I kind of just preview and show you. And if I have tried it, I will demo it and share my experiences with you. But as you know, ColourPop just comes out with so much. I don't keep every little thing that they send me, but I do try to test as much as I can and give you that overview so you can kind of see what we're working with in terms of launches. So I'm going to start off with the two individual items that were sent to me that weren't in the collection and then we'll start getting into I believe one, two, three, four. We have five collections to get into. But first, let's start off with the items that are not in a collection. So Fourth Ray, which is ColourPop's sister brand, launched the Pore Perfect Refining Priming Moisturizer. This one is pretty new. I received this probably like in the last week or so. And this is what it looks like. If you don't know Fourth Ray, they are kind of like the skincare, body care version of ColourPop, not cosmetic products. So this is a refining priming moisturizer. It's supposed to prep pores to start the day with balance and perfected makeup ready skin so it's a two-in-one moisturizer and primer for your pores so I did use this today for the first time I think it did have definitely a moisturizing quality I didn't notice it doing too much with pores but that's normally not something that is a major concern of mine but it did smooth my skin it had that kind of Tatcha silk canvas feel to it but a little bit more on the cream moisturizer side than the Tatcha but it had that slick kind of feel on the skin. So I do think it definitely smoothed my skin and it hydrated it. So it did exactly what it said it was going to do. If pores are a major concern for you, take my review with a grain of salt because I do need to play with this some more before I can give you the full rundown of this. But it is a $14 primer, which is not really super cheap when I think of ColourPop, but it still is a lot more affordable than what you can purchase at Sephora. So I'll continue playing with this, see if I can find any dupes for it. It does smell like pineapple, by the way. So there is a fragrance to it. It is very, very subtle though. So yeah, that is that. ColourPop also sent over the Matte About Hue palette. I was really excited about this one. So this one is fairly new. It's $34 and it's one of the big eyeshadow palettes. And as you can see, it is an all matte rainbow palette. So I played with it for the first time today. I haven't even swatched every color. So again, just know I'm not the most experienced with it. But overall, I would say if you're looking to have staple matte colors in your collection. You don't want to have to constantly be buying different palettes. I feel like it is good to have this around to always grab for when you need a certain specific matte color that is bright if you're a neutral person. So I definitely think it is a handy palette. In terms of quality, I think it is definitely solid. I think it is worth the money. A few shades in the palette definitely had that pressed pigment feel to them, meaning they were not very hard pressed. So they can get a bit messy, though I will say with today's look, I did not get any fallout on my eyes. Overall, I really do think it is solid, especially for the price point, but I did have a little difficulty blending the pink colors in my outer corner over here, but I was able to aid that by layering different colors and making it work because it is a gradient-based palette, so that does help with the blending. And it also is a great dupe for the Viseart Grande Pro Volume Palette that was limited edition. They have an all-matte rainbow palette just like this, so this this is a great alternative to that and I think it is decent color pop quality so I'm not mad at it. I did use it for today's look minus the shimmery eyelid shade obviously since it is an all matte palette so let me quickly show you what I did to get this kind of sunset look. So I started off with the shade Pal right here on the inner half of my crease. It's quite sheer. It didn't do too much but I thought it was a very good transition shade for today's look. And then the next shade that I used was Screwdriver which is this orange shade right here. And then I kind of used it in the area that you're seeing right there being applied to start the blend. What is amazing about this palette obviously is how it is a true gradient palette so it makes it very easy to create looks that aren't going to get muddy if you just follow the pattern that they give you. 
And then I went in with the shade Lil Iffy in the outer corner and you can see I kind of winged this shade out. It's like a very nice hot pink color. This is a shade that I did notice I struggled to blend and it also had that pressed pigment, very loosely packed feel to it, which I think is why it was more difficult to blend. So to help aid the blend, I went in with Cola right above it. And that's what I mean by this palette makes it easy to blend even if an individual shade doesn't blend because if you use any shade above it, below it, beside it, it's going to help that blend. So I use this to kind of meet the orange and the little iffy shade and that completely smoothed out the blend. And then finally I went in with Fun 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 right here in the corner and I used that close to my lash line and I winged it out just below Lil Iffy and that kind of blended and added some depth to the look and that is what I used to create this look. I still have a lot more to go. As you know, blues and greens can be difficult to formulate so I'll need to play more on this side of the palette but I still think even for what I just did today, it is totally worth it if you are looking for something to fulfill these colors in your collection. This is perfect. It's affordable. And I typically really like these big ones. Sometimes they can be not as good. I think ColourPop for the most part has a really great matte formula considering the price point. So this one is very, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna start getting into the collections now. I'm gonna start off with the older collections even though they really didn't launch that long ago. And then we'll finish up with the newest items. So the first collection that I have, unfortunately, it was extremely popular and sold out within the first few hours of it launching. And they haven't restocked it. So hopefully they will. This is the BT21 collection. I've gotta be honest with you, I have no clue what BT21 is but I think it is a darn cute collection so as of now what is no longer available is this eyeshadow palette and this is one of the best things in the collection though I'm not going to go over it too much because I've already talked about it in rankings videos I've used this palette a lot and you can't get it anymore but I don't know if they do happen to restock this palette this is a really good one from ColourPop it also is quite unique as well they don't have many palettes if any that have this particular layout and pan sizes I think the quality in here is very consistent, which is something that ColourPop struggles with. The shimmers are really nice. There are a couple pressed glitters, but it really isn't too much at all. The mattes work beautifully, and it's a very versatile palette. So I'm going to stop there just because you can't get it anymore. But if ColourPop ever happens to restock, this collection and you're interested in this color story, this is most definitely a hit. The collection also came out with seven Super Shock shadows, which is a lot. We have a lot of eye products and I, I don't know why they did that, but these are so cute. They come with little animal packaging and then the Super Shock itself is really nice. If you've been following me, you would know that Super Shock Shadows, my love has been rekindled for them recently. They're ColourPop's the very first item that they launched, but recently I've been using them a lot more. I think they're amazing. So as of now, there are only two colors available, one of which I am wearing today. So that's awesome. So Fluffy and Hungry is really gorgeous. This is the shade that I have on my eyelid. These are $8 each. It's just a really nice orangey shade and then the other one that is available is Passionate Friend. And these are interesting because they have kind of like a marbled effect to them. So you kind of have to guess what color you're gonna get until you swatch it. This is kind of like a yellowy green shade. So these are both very beautiful and wearable shades. Honestly, I'm surprised that these are the shades available because so many of you will be able to utilize these in looks, but I definitely recommend them. But I will say the other shades that they came out in this collection are also gorgeous. My favorite, in case they do a restock, you can come back to this video, is the shade Just Like Sunshine. This is the bottom shade of all of the swatches. It is such a pretty periwinkle purpley color. Honestly, people, you cannot go wrong with their Super Shock formula. So they come out in all different types of collections. They have so many colors. You don't need to pick it up from this collection. But yeah, I'm still loving Super Shocks. And then the last item that was in this collection were the lip oils. And all three are still available. They are $10 each. So we have kind of a more reddish shade right here, a more peachy shade, and then a golden shade across the galaxy. And ColourPop lip oils in general, they're decent. I think they're worth the price. I think there's also a lot 
better lip oils out there but if you don't want to spend a pretty penny because I'm not gonna lie you guys the lip oils that I like are pricier these are good $10 ones this one is pretty sheer all of them are sheer but the consistency of how I would describe these are they're quite slick a lot of the lip oils that I prefer tend to have a little bit more stick and thickness to them so just know that these have a lot of movement on the lip you know slippy slidey and they don't contain much pigment which is not a bad thing they are a lip oil after all so they're decent they're not my favorite part of this collection I would direct you towards the eye items of this collection but these are very very cute overall this collection is super cute I think it was very successful and obviously that's why almost everything is sold out I really do hope they do a restock of this one the next collection that we're going into is clay it cool this is an awesome super wearable bronzy summer collection and I think a lot of you are gonna be interested in this one so the first item the main most exciting one is the clay it cool shadow palette this is $16. I've not applied this to the eyes yet, so I'm not sure an application, but this looks like a dupe for the Patrick Tom Major Dimension eyeshadow palette, doesn't it? It even has a cream shadow, and it's kind of the same layout. So now that I'm thinking about it, I think that was done intentionally. They were definitely trying to dupe the Patrick Tom palette. I'll have to put them side by side. But anyways, I think that this is a phenomenal palette just by feel. Again, not by application, but by the swatches of the shimmer shadows. These seem to be a really nice solid formula. They felt creamy, they felt very pigmented, and most of the time I don't notice any struggle with mattes on ColourPop's side. So I think I'm like pretty confident that if you like this color story, the quality is going to be really good. There's even, like I said, a cream shadow in here which felt a little drier. The Patrick Tao definitely feels a little bit more, like it has more slip to it, but yeah, I think this one's going to be hit. Gonna have to use it, but it's definitely a Patrick Tao dupe if you don't want to spend that money. So I'm excited that that one is still available. Also in the collection, they came out with how many bronzers? One, two, three, four, five, six Super Shock bronzers. Now this is a new formula. They obviously have the Super Shock blushes, highlights, and eyeshadows, but they've never come out with them in a bronzer form. So I was very curious. I've been using these a lot recently. I actually am very experienced with these. So the two shades that I am currently using is Get Sandy, which is definitely more for the fair skin tones and then I'll bet. So if you're around my skin tone, I'll bet is the better bet, but I still played with this one and opened it and used it just to see. This is a little pink on me, a little bit soft. It's good for those really natural days for me, but I will say I'll that gives me the bronze look. So what I was curious about this formula was if it was going to be, you know, like a cream formula, creamed powder, powder formula. It's definitely more of a cream formula that kind of gets a little powdery, not super powdery, but I would apply it as a cream bronzer, like with a sponge or with a brush that has synthetic fibers. Definitely not the same way that you would apply your powder bronzers. These are okay, if I'm being honest. I'm not in love with these. I wouldn't say I love, you know, this over my other cream bronzers. I definitely am more likely to grab for my favorite cream bronzers, but it's not a bad product. And the shade range is very inclusive. There's only only six shades but I feel like they hit a lot of different skin tone ranges here because it does go quite deep. So kudos to them on that. But yeah, these are okay. They are $8 each. I think they're a decent product. They're worth the money. So yeah, a new shimmering body powder from Soul Body also launched in the collection. This is a shade Fired Up. I'm never really in love with these. The pan's too big. This is not really a good color for me to use on my face. As a highlight, I don't use these on my body. I don't like having the transfer on my clothes. This would be a pretty lid color. I haven't even swatched it. I'm just going to throw it in a giveaway because I know I'm not going to get use from it. It is a gorgeous golden kind of peachy pink color. And I think this will look beautiful on medium to deep skin tones, especially deep skin tones. This as a highlight on you. It is $14, so that's that on that. And then the last items that I have from the collection are the blotted lips. Hold on, I'm looking up the prices here. I believe there were four colors in the collection. I did only get sent two. The shades that I got were Bust and Paint Me, and these are interesting. I don't think I've ever really experimented with their blotted lip formula before, but I, I do like them. They do look like a blotted lip. It looks like you put on a lipstick and then blotted it with 
with a paper towel so they don't give too much color but honestly you can build them up they make the lips look very plush so I haven't played with this formula too much but I do like the colors in this collection they do pull a little warmer on my lips than I was anticipating but it's definitely an interesting formula if you like that blotted lip look I do recommend it it looks like you can get the set of all four from this collection for $28 and then individually if you purchase them they are going to be eight the next collection that we have is from the On The List collection. Now this collection is an Ulta exclusive so you can only purchase it at Ulta. It is available on the website right now and this collection includes a palette, six lipsticks, and four color sticks. So let's take a look at the palette first. At first I thought this was a Christmas collection <laughs> because doesn't this look like a Christmas tree with lights? and it's called on the list anyways i'm not gonna swatch this palette for you guys i opened it and it just doesn't look like a palette that i need the color story doesn't scream out to me it's the peachy kind of shades we get a lot of from ColourPop. so i don't have too much to say about this if the color story intrigues you i mean you find it over at ulta but yeah this this color story doesn't really speak to me, so I, I don't have too much to say about it. The palette is $18 if you are interested. I think it's kind of steep. I feel like you'd be better off getting a different palette. It's my opinion though. But I think my favorite part of this collection are the lipsticks. There are six different shades in this collection. I am currently wearing the shade The Lounge. They are $9 each. If you don't know my thoughts on these lipsticks from ColourPop, they are the Cream Luxe lipstick formula. I think that they have such a high-end feel to them. Now the only con to these lipsticks that I've noticed is that they don't have the longest wear, but these are lipsticks I don't mind. Throwing in my purse, reapplying, they're quite hydrating. And the selection of the lipsticks in this collection are beautiful as you can see on my swatches right now. My favorites are the Lounge, which is on my lips currently. I mean, there really isn't a shade in this collection that I don't love. Another kind of nudie shade that's a little bit more warm is Layover. That one is also very beautiful and then you have some deeper lip shades like Ivar over here which I think is going to be so fun come fall so overall this is a very very solid lipstick collection from Colourpop for a while they stopped launching these cream locks lipsticks and it was making me mad because I feel like they had a kickback formula but I'm happy to see them launching them more frequently now and the packaging is so cute if you want a nice affordable lipstick I do recommend Colourpop and then the last item in the collection are the on the list color sticks seven dollars each we have a skin tone peach shade a metallic green a metallic purple and then a darker purple in this line honestly I don't find myself reaching for the color sticks very often these are seven dollars each and they're nice as eyeshadow bases I've worn them alone I do notice that they crease so you do need to set your eyelids properly and then maybe a little bit of powder on top these aren't just a product that I reach for often and if I am going to reach for this style of product I'm probably more likely to reach for my Laura Mercier or Bobbi Brown. Those, these definitely are not as creamy as those brands. So yeah, these are just a formula from ColourPop that I don't reach for very often. They're not bad per se, and they're great for adding details to look or lining your lower lash line and blending it out. So there is a purpose to them, but the, the lipsticks just outweigh the other items in this collection in my opinion. So that's that on that. We're gonna move on to the final two launches that I have. So next up, I got a package of these graphic inks or graphics with an X ink liners there's a ton of colors it looks like there's three six nine different colors of liquid liners now I don't know exactly the history behind these liners but I do know I tried this formula once before in the Star Wars collection and they were a glitter formula and they burned my eyes so I wasn't a fan of those but they've launched nine matte shades and I used two on my eyelids today you can see by the boxes there's just a ton of different colors I didn't swatch them for you because I just don't know if I'm gonna use those colors it's the kind of thing where they're gonna sit in my collection for a while and if I ever need a certain color for a look then I'll pull it and then the ones that I don't end up using I'll give away but I did swatch three for you the black the brown in IDK and then so whiny as well so today I use the shade so whiny as kind of like my bigger 
outer wing, my base wing along my whole lash line. And this was really, really pretty. And then I kind of got a little bit closer to my lash line and did a little mini wing with Love Fool, which is the black. Just to add definition and to give my false lashes something to lay on. So here are my thoughts on these. They are $9 each. So they're not super cheap, but again, they're still a very good price based on what we get from Sephora. And then you can also buy the whole set of nine of them for $85. You only save $5 if you do that, but if you just need a collection of multiple shades of eyeliners, this is really good. So overall, I like these a lot better than the glitter formulas that came out with Star Wars. They do not burn my eyes. I couldn't figure out how to open it at first. I wasn't sure which side the applicator was going to come on, but it's just a nice long felt tip applicator. It's not a brush applicator, but I did find it quite easy to apply the product. It doesn't give the smoothest or most clean application, so if you do have some fine lines in your eyelids, just keep that in mind. You might have to go over a little bit and just be a little careful in that regard, but they did dry pretty matte. I did notice I had to go back and layer one or two times. Nothing to really annoy me, but I did need to go back with that black a few times to get it as black as I wanted. But overall, my thoughts about these eyeliners, I think they're pretty good. I'm going to have to test the wear on them because today is the first use that I gave them. For me, I wouldn't purchase like the black shade because I already have so many black liners that are better in my collection. But if there's a unique color that you want, that you're not going to use often, but you think you might need it for certain looks or a certain occasion, that is when you want to go to ColourPop because they're going to have the color that you want because they have so many unique ones and you're not going to break the bank. So yeah, that is when I would recommend these liners. They aren't anything that I feel like you need to absolutely run out and pick up right now. But if there's a color that you need, these are a fantastic option. Okay, this last collection is not makeup. And I don't know too much about it because it doesn't launch until August 25th. But ColourPop is coming out with some hair products and it's very interesting. So let's see, this is the information that Trend Mood is giving me here. So these are a collection of semi-permanent hair tints and coloring conditioners. I don't color my hair. I also have dark hair, so I don't think these are going to work on me. But in the collection, they're going to sell these hair clips for $5 each. And then we have the main event color conditioners. So these are going to be $16 each and they're made to extend color vibrancy for additional washes best for semi-permanent color maintenance or for a more pastel soft color payoff. So if you do color your hair, these actually are very cool. There's a chestnut shade, a peach shade, and then a turquoise shade. And then the other one that we have here is the main event hair tint, $14. So just very affordable for coloring your hair, I think. And it's designed to add vibrant color to hair with its ready to use semi-permanent properties. So I think the idea is you use the turquoise hair tint and then you use the colored conditioner to maintain that color. It's recommended to leave the products on for 30 to 45 minutes. And we have also the peach and the chestnut shade. I'm not going to use these. I'm not gonna color my hair. Gosh, I feel like I'm too old to do that now. <laughs> Would have died for this when I was like in middle school and high school, but these actually might be something cool to gift your kids. Anyways, these are actually gonna end up in my 100K giveaway pile since I won't use them. Those are all of the launch that I've received recently from ColourPop. Main goal of this video is just to let you know what's new, what's out there, what I think is worth it, what catches my eye, what's good quality, all of that. So I hope this was a nice overview for you to see since ColourPop can be very overwhelming. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.